Alright, it's been some time since my last tutorial, which was two years ago. However, I'm back with a new one. I will show you the basics of Particular and how I implement it in edits. And I tried to keep this tutorial as simple as possible, so it's easy to follow along. I already have my clips in my composition and the first thing I always do is select your layers and make them 3D objects. And you can do that by checking the box here with the cube symbol. And this is really important so that your particles move with the camera. Otherwise the particles would be standing still doing their own thing and which would result in a static scene. And yeah. You, you don't you don't want a static scene. After you've made the layers into 3D objects, create a new camera by right click new um, camera. You can keep the settings by default uh, and also create a new null object. Uh, just create another one. We need two and yeah, cut it. But it's also important to parent your camera to the null object above you and this null object needs to be parented with the null with the second null and make sure to make them 3d objects as well so check the box there and i usually use my null layer to make all of my transitions uh, so you basically control your movement inside this null layer. Now add a new solid and rename it particular. Search for the effect particular and add it to your solid. Once you edit particular, check the box with the dot there. So you can only see your particles for now, not the enemy scenes and stuff and open the emitter, emitter settings first and change the emitter type to box and the emitter size to XYZ individual and change the emitter size X to a higher value like 2500 do the same with the Y and for the emitter size Z this basically controls the depth of your particles so use a uh, higher value like 5000, 4000. I will stick with 4500. Now open the particle settings and change the size random to 100%. Change the opacity random also to 100%. And for the color, set color, change it to random from gradient and then open the color gradient. And maybe choose a preset with only two or three colors. We'll keep it simple. I will use three colors. We will change it later. Just keep it like that for now. For size of a life, this is important. So your particles fade out nicely. Change the size of a life to this preset here. And the size, you can control the size of the particles here. And let's just keep it five for now. Now open the environment settings. This controls the physics of your particles. So if your particles are moving left to right or up and down or is coming towards you or is going away from you. So if we want our particles to fly up, we will use our Y axis. Maybe use a value like minus 400. Now our particles are only going up but maybe we also want them to fly a bit to the right. So I will use for the X, maybe a value like 350. For pre-run, I will always use a number like five seconds and physics time factor, just keep it by default for now. We will adjust this later as well. Particles are looking like this right now. In the setting global controls, you find physics time factor and this controls the speed of your particles. If you use a high value, the particles will move faster. So let's, for example, if I use 8, let me render it. As you can see, our particles are way too fast. But it's really good if you want to 
animate the velocity of your particles. I always use physics time factor to animate the velocity. So let's do it. I use a value like 5, animate it, put the keyframe at the start of your layer, go maybe until the middle of your layer and use a low value like 0.5. So the particles are moving really slow on this point and at the end of the layer use a high value again so the particles will move fast again. Select all of your keyframes, easy ease, make the graph like this. Okay, let's render it. I hope you have a basic understanding of the graphs in After Effects. If not, learn the basics first if this is already overwhelming you. But this is how our particles are looking like. It starts fast. I'm moving slow in the middle of the clip and I'm going fast again. Let's uncheck the dot now here so we can see our particles in the clip. And as you can see, the colors does not really fit with the background. It doesn't look good overall yet. So the first thing I always do is change the color. Maybe let's, let's make the size a bit bigger, maybe an eight. Okay, now let's change the color to something that fits the scene. So once you found your color that you like, change the blending mode. You can change the blending mode here. Change it to add so the particles can blend more in with the background. Or if you don't want them to be so bright, you can change it to screen. But I will use add for now because I like it better. Okay, let's add deep glow. Change the exposure to maybe 0.3. Let's see what we have for now. Okay, after you add low to your particles, there's still something we need to adjust in the scene. And as you can see, the particles are in front of the character and I don't like that. So let's change this. I always add a new solid with Control alt y Just add a new solid, check the eye and use your masking tool. Mask over your character. Just mask your character out. Okay, once you're done with the mask, Go to track mat, you can see it here, and change it to alpha inverted mat. And you can see the particles are gone from the person, but we have this weird pixels here. So let's press M, press M on the keyboard, on the solid. Change the mask feather to about 100 pixels. And now the pixels are gone. And the particles are also gone in front of the person. Now this is looking way better now. What I also do is click on the particle layer and change the random seed to find something you like. Okay, now we are done. That's how I basically do all of my basic particles. It's always the same process. Now you can still add new effects. Like if you want this fancy rainbow effect, for example, that I always use. I just add color balance to particular and animate the hue. Go to the end of your frame and adjust the value a bit and you're done. That's how I do the rainbow particles, if you are interested in them. And you can still add more effects, like just be creative with it. You can, you can add an um, S mosaic effect to make pixel particles, I don't know, just be creative. Actually, if you want to do that, use the basic mosaic plugin from After Effects and change it to sharp colors, maybe 40. And now you have pixel particles if you want this if it's your style or something i will delete this okay, let's let's keep the rainbow particles and now you're basically done make sure you have the particle layer under your camera and now just make your transitions maybe let's just do a zoom transition separate dimensions go to the start of your clip animate do a zoom out 2000 that's too much go at the end of your keyframe and change it to zero Easy ease and change the graph. Also make sure to enable motion blur on your particles so it looks smooth. Now you're done. That's how I do my particles. And I'm gonna do the same process for the other clips as well now. See you then.
As you can see, I'm done doing the same process on every scene. And I use the mask again, so particles are not in front of the person. Same with here, you use the mask. And about the physics time factor, press U on the keyboard, you can see the keyframes. Um, I use the value like 0.5, so the particles are moving slow at this point. And at the end of the scene, I use the value like 3.0 to make it faster. And at the start, the same value. So it moves fast to start and slow in the middle and fast again. Same with here. There I used in the middle of the clip a value like 0.1 so the particles are really slow and fast again with 3.0. And just simple particles, I didn't do fancy stuff for now. If you want to do more stuff, you can change your particle type, for example, to star or to glow spear. But we don't need glow spear. If you already have deep glow, which is way better than glow spear, just don't use it. Just use your spear. There's also cloudlet. I don't use it that often, but it's okay. And there's also streaklet and sprite. With sprite... You can change your whole particle texture. For example, you can choose um, you can choose weird icon symbols or heart or many more stuff. You can just try it out and be creative with it. You can also change the position of your particles here if you want to move them or move the depth of the particles. Also, it's really important that you don't forget the pre-run settings. So if it's on zero, you will have less particles on your scene and it will look bad. So you always use a number like 5 seconds pre-run or 3 seconds pre-run. But don't let it stay on zero because in particle settings, the value is always on zero by default, which is bad, as you can see. And just change it to 5, maybe, or another number, but not zero. I also did the... Um, transitions on the null layers just a, a simple zoom in and here as well so now let's have a look at how the scene looks with color correction and sharpen that's pretty much all that's all my secrets to my particle settings you can be a lot more creative with it if you just try some different values or textures or different effects and yeah i hope this tutorial was helpful if you have any more questions just write them in the comments below i try to answer them and yeah have a good day